Hello, ladies and gentlemen, uh, alchemists and rubyists. Uh, I'm happy to present you uh, my project. Not, uh, it's not the, fir the first presentation about Flavox. It's the second one uh, with some additional features. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Anton. I am a Ruby developer at Matic Insurance Services, and we are hiring. Uh, I am a big fan of Elixir programming language, and I, I am known a little as an author and maintainer of eSpec, uh, behavior-driven development testing library for Elixir, and uh, my new project, Flowex. <coughs> okay, uh, a little of history. Uh, I started interesting in flow-based programming last year at summer. Uh, Almost at the same time, uh, Jose Valim uh, released his library Gen Stage, and I thought that it's cool with uh, Elixir Gen Stage. I'm I'm really can implement uh, flow-based programming uh, in Elixir, and it uh, and it should be easy. And I made my uh, first talk uh, on October first last year on third uh, Kiev Elixir meetup. Uh, the, uh, the talk was about flow-based programming with Elixir. Uh, there were uh, some examples of flow-based programming and a lot of information about flow-based programming itself. Uh, you can find uh, the presentation in uh, SlideShare, for example. Uh, the next talk was about my uh, own library, Flowex. It's, it was like uh, the next step uh, of my, my interest in uh, flow-based programming. I presented this library on Elixir Club 5 conference. Uh, it was like, uh, more like proof of concept uh, with, with minimal amount of features. And uh, now uh, there are a lot of improvements since then. And I won't present you uh, some of them. Okay, so uh, what next? Uh, the next step for me uh, is uh, trying to, to use another programming languages with Elixir because uh, flow-based programming uh, allows, allows and encourage you to uh, make reusable independent components and these components may be uh, implemented uh, uh, using any programming language. Uh, so the next step for me is to is trying to use another another programming languages uh, within Elixir infrastructure. Okay, uh, what what I will talk uh, talk about? First of all, uh, a quick introduction to flow-based programming, very quick. Uh, then uh, I present you Flowex library uh, and main features of the library. Uh, then we are going to discuss uh, some tools for running external programs uh, from Elixir, Erlang Elixir or from BIM VM. Uh, and uh, and at the, on, the last, on the last pass, I just want to present s uh, a little example how to use uh, other programming languages uh, with Elixir, uh, and uh, this this example in, uh, will sh will demonstrate you how to use Ruby code, Python code, and how to evaluate shell commands from Elixir within uh, using Flowex, of course. Okay, so let's start from short introduction into flow-based programming. Uh, flow-based programming uh, is an alternative approach to so-called conventional programming we, uh, we are using in everyday life. Uh, to write programs use, using a flow-based programming paradigm, uh, you need something like mind, mind shifting because you need to try another approach to, for writing software. Uh, so as you can read uh, from, from the slide, uh, application written in flow based within flow based programming paradigm is like 
a set of independent components uh, which are communicating between each other. And uh, when you model your program or part of your program uh, with, with flow based, within flow-based programming paradigm, uh, you f first of all, you think about data and the and the transformation. Transformation. So each component of your system just transform data and pass and, and pass uh, this data to another component. Okay. Uh, just to demonstrate, uh, it's so-called flow-based programming diagram, and it demonstrates uh, the uh, the main abstractions of flow of flow-based programming. So the main uh, abstraction is a component. Component is an independent process that, that has uh, one or several inputs and outputs. Uh, and uh, these components are communicating uh, via messages, messages, uh, so-called informational package, or just in short, IP. So uh, the typical program uh, in flow-based prog uh, programming uh, is a set of, the, of such components uh, on the, uh, uh, and data are passed to input of, of first component. Uh, then the data transforms in some way and passes to another component, another and uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, what are advantages of such approach? Uh, first of all, uh, the most important advantage, uh, advantage is that parallelism are natural because every component is independent process and every component has uh, may evaluate uh, in abs absolutely independently from other components. Uh, with, such a, with, with such approach, we don't have any problems associated with uh, shared memory and logs because uh, in such approach, uh, there is no shared state. Uh, sorry, uh, the next important thing, oh. the next in important thing is uh, uh, the, the, the visualization of our program is very simple in such approach because uh, you can easily write your component on a board and just to show how, how data are passed from one component to another. And uh, components are absolutely independent uh, and reusable. Okay. Uh, a very important thing uh, about FBP approach or FBP application is that every flow-based programming application consists f uh, like from two layers. The bottom layers, like switch, uh, uh, the bottom layers is uh, the business logic itself. It's a set of components. Each component implements a part, uh, a part of business logic. And another layer uh, is a top layer, uh, so-called communication logic. It's a logic that allows these independent components to communicate, uh, communicate each other because component, uh, components are independent and uh, and uh, they don't know about existence of another co uh, of other components so we need something uh, some layer that, uh, that will uh, that will orchestrate communication between uh, the components uh, okay as i said uh, bottom layer again uh, like independent components uh, the only uh, thing component does is only transform input data into output data, input IP to output IP. And in general, component absolutely uh, indep imp uh, independent and can be implemented use using any programming language. Uh, what about top layer? Uh, uh, top layer needs so-called communication language. And as you already realized, Elixir and Erlang, Elixir Erlang are very good language to do such communication, to be a communication language, uh, because of uh, actor model of concurrency. Yes, in Elixir uh, uh, and Erlang, or in Beam, 
the main the main abstraction is a process, and Elixir program is a uh, set of independent processes that communicate with, uh, with each other. Uh, but even uh, with existing Elixir and Erlang abstraction, it's not quite easy to uh, set up such communication. We need to solve uh, problems without interface contracts, without error handling, uh, without appropriate message routing, etc., etc., etc. But uh, last year, uh, Elixir Gen Stage library was released, and uh, and things became much simpler. A few words about Gen Stage. Uh, Gen Stage is an Elixir, a new Elixir behavior. Now it's like a separate library. Uh, this behavior, uh, Gen Stage is a behavior for exchanging events with back pressure between Elixir process. Uh, just uh, so I would say uh, that Gen Stage is like abstraction built on. Uh, uh, ordinary Elixir gen server, but allows uh, to establish communication easily between them. So uh, all you need is just to subscribe one, one gen station to another, and that's it. And uh, uh, gen stage will handle all the cases, will handle uh, communication, handle back pressure, uh, and uh, if year occurs, gen stage will restart your gen, stage, gen stages appropriately. Uh, Jose Lim defined gen stage as better abstractions for working with, with, uh, with collections. But we can use it for better interprocess communication. So we, we are going to use gen stages just to establish communication between our components in flow based programming paradigm. Okay. So, need flowers. Railway flow based programming. It's not a general case for flow based program programming. It's so called uh, railway flow based programming. It's uh, my term, it, uh, nothing scientific. Okay, so uh, how I define, uh, define Flowex? It's like a set of abstraction built on top of Elixir Gen Stage, which allows running program with FBAP uh, par paradigm. Yeah? So built on top of Gen Stage. And uh, it's like a mix of flow-based programming and so-called railway-oriented programming approach. I will describe what does it mean. So, uh, what is railway programming approach at first? Uh, it uh, railway uh, railway-oriented uh, programming. Uh, sorry, railway-oriented programming. It's a pattern in functional programming language when. Uh, we design our program like a sequence of function calls. So uh, what our program does is just call one function, the output of, of the first function uh, is passed to the second function, function output of the second passed to the third, etc., etc. So just our, our data just move uh, through pipeline of functions, like on rails. Yeah? And to demonstrate, to demonstrate this pattern, just a simple example, uh, we have one module uh, which defines this function, function add one multiplied by two minus three, and it's evident what, uh, what is going on here. Uh, and uh, when I run my program, I just pass the number through every function and get the result. Yeah, so we j just have a pipeline of this function. It's a railway-oriented programming, so-called. And what is the, what is uh, the idea of railway flow-based programming? Is just to place each of the uh, each of the function in your program into separate gen stage. So every every function will be evaluated inside its own process, and data will pass from from one process to another. It's like uh, a simple, a simple explanation. What what Flowbox does? It uh, it allows just to recap. It allows you to transform your functional code uh, written uh, using um, uh, railway-oriented programming paradigm 
uh, to flow-based programming, something like that. Okay, uh, what you need to do, how, how, how you can change your uh, existing code to, uh, to, have, to have pipeline of independent process. All you need is to set up Flowex as a library, of course, and uh, use Flowex pipeline module in, in your module. Uh, let's see on this slide. Uh, in this module, we use Flowex pipeline. Then we defined a struct, which has only number. And then we define uh, so-called pipes, abstractions in Flowex, uh, and define which function will be placed uh, into separate process. So here I define that function add one will be placed into separate pr process or separate stage or separate component, like in a flow-based programming. A function multiplied by two and, fu in, and uh, function minus, minus three will be placed into separate components. And uh, there is functions definition. So each function, uh, function functions are very simple. All, uh, what, what they do, just, just accept a struct defined here, which with only number, accept a struct and some options, uh, modify the struct and, and return it. So I each fun function accepts structs, make some transformation uh, of the data inside uh, this struct and return this, the same struct. Yes, so uh, the function must have uh, the, the same interface because only with, with uh, the same interface we can pipe them into one uh, place, place them into one pipeline. Yes. Uh, so uh, there is a function definition, and on top of the module, I just define that each of the function will be placed into separate pipe, and that's it. We we defined our pipeline. Uh, also, uh, Flowex pipeline uh, module or using of Flowex pipeline uh, module adds additional functionality to our module. It adds uh, start and stop function. Uh, this function we use to start uh, these processes and, and stop them. And uh, uh, call and cast and cast functions just to run calculations inside, inside uh, the pipeline. Okay, let's start pipeline. Uh, this slide demonstrates uh, what happens when you start pipeline. Uh, to start pipeline, you just call method start on your defined uh, module. And what happens? First of all, each of your functions are placed into a separate uh, gen stage, into a separate pro process, uh, and became separate components. Also, uh, Flowex adds a error pipe to handle errors. And Flowex adds uh, producer pipe and consumer pipe. Producer and consumer uh, do nothing. They just to produce data and to uh, consume the result and return the result to the client. And all of uh, these uh, gen stages, all of these components are placed under supervisor. So when uh, crash occurs in some process, supervisor will restart it. So this, uh, all six agent stages and one supervisor. And, and now we can use uh, call and cast uh, functions to run calculation inside uh, this pipeline. Yeah, uh, it's a just Elixir and Erlang convention to use call for uh, synchronous uh, uh, calls and cast for asynchronous. So when uh, we use call, uh, we uh, pass the pipeline structure. The pipeline structure uh, function starts, returns the pipeline structure, and then we use this pipeline structure to run calculation. We just uh, call the call function, uh, pass, pass the pipeline, and pass the initial informational package with number two. Yeah? Uh, this informational package, this structure, pass, uh, uh, will pass through each of, of the components and our main process will wait for, for the result and the result will be three. Uh, if, if you don't want to get the result or if you do s some operation that uh, 
that shouldn't uh, return anything. You uh, anything you uh, can use cast operation is just uh, push data uh, to the pipeline and and immediately returns. Yes, and then don't don't wait the result. Okay, uh, it's my fa favorite picture just to explain again what uh, what is going on when you uh, pass data into the pipeline. So uh, here is a pipeline, yeah, this producer. Uh, there is no uh, error pipe here, just just keep it. So uh, it's a calling process. Uh, when you call pipeline, it sent uh, AP package to producer. Producer do nothing, just send it to uh, the first pipe. In first pipe, add one returns uh, new uh, data structure with number three. Then uh, it it is passed to multiply by two uh, component. Yes, and it retur returns number six. Then minus three, number three uh, returns to con consumer, and consumer returns the final result uh, in the calling process. Okay. Uh, a few words about the error pipe. Uh, the logic, uh, the logic of pipeline. Is the following: When uh, when a year, uh, when an, an error occurs in some in some of component, uh, the data will bypass bypass uh, through the rest of components, and the function in in these components will not be called. So, if if for example in the first pipe uh, there is a error, uh, this informational package will. Uh, with some additional error information, will we, uh, bypass uh, through each component, but uh, uh, but function will not be called, and then this package uh, move to error pipe, and in error pipe you can handle this error and do something. By default, Flowex uh, Flowex adds uh, default error pipe pipe uh, to the to the pipeline, but everyone can define its own error pipe uh, using macro error pipe and define the function which will have a error message here or just error struct here and you can do what you want with, with the error. Uh, the next important abstraction uh, in Flowex is Flowex client. Uh, why we need client? Uh, if, if you use cast operation uh, with, with a synchronous calling of pipeline, you can push many data, uh, data into, into, into the pipeline and each of, of components uh, and every component will have enough data to process. S so again, uh, imagine you have three components. If I use cast and don't wait the result, I may push many data here and, wi uh, and uh, while data moving through the pipeline, each, each component has, uh, has its own work and each component uh, can do its work. So we, uh, we process, pr process uh, this data in parallel. But if you use call synchronous, you pass one uh, informational package and you should wait until this package uh, go uh, through each component. And uh, only one component can do uh, its job uh, uh, at one time. Uh, to solve this problem, uh, Flowex has abstraction Flowex client. Flowex client is like independent process, independent gen server that has information about which pipeline to run. Uh, to run. And uh, there may be a lot of clients connected to one pipeline. So even using call operation, synchronous call operation, you can effectively utilize pipeline. So each each of the components uh, will do work, will process. The next important thing is about fighting bottlenecks. I hope you understand uh, that uh, pipeline has has. Uh, Imagine, imagine that uh, that uh, one of the component in your pipeline do, for example, very extensive calculation, or for example, 
communicate with external API. So this component is very slow component. And if you will pass data uh, into your pipeline, uh, uh, they will be stuck before this component, yeah, because this component is very slow. Uh, Flowex has a solution for this situation. Uh, uh, you can define, you can duplicate these components or multiplicate these components. You, you can define how many copies of each of component uh, will be in your pipeline. Uh, when you pass, uh, pass, pass uh, as a second argument uh, three, it means that uh, you have uh, th three multiplied by two components. Yeah. The next picture, yes. Uh, this picture demonstrates what what will uh, what uh, what will happen when you when when we duplicate this uh, this pipe. Yeah. So. In this pipeline, we have uh, three, du three duplicated multiplied by two components. And uh, if uh, informational package goes through add one, and for example, this component now uh, doing its job, this, two, uh, this is busy too, uh, the informational package will be uh, sent to the third one. Yeah, it's like a solution uh, to control uh, bottlenecks. Uh, okay, and the last one, I, I hope. Uh, how, how we create reusable components using Flowex? Uh, in previous example, we defined functions inside, inside your model and define which function will be placed into separate gen stage. But if we want to reuse components, we need to uh, copy-paste uh, this function into another model. Uh, it's not good. So Flowex allows you to define uh, module, uh, by, uh, module pipes uh, and, pass, and pass module name into pipe macro. What is module pipe? It's just a module which uh, must implement only two, two functions, uh, init function and call function. It's like uh, in Elixir Polak library. So init function will be called when uh, the pipeline uh, is starting and then when you when you run calculation inside the pipeline, uh, the call function will be called uh, on each component. So it allows us to uh, make reusable uh, modules uh, and then uh, use these modules inside another pipeline yeah? and just make reusable components. Okay, so what are the advantages of uh, this approach of railway flow-based programming. Uh, first of all, it's explicit definition. Of, uh, first of all, you uh, explicitly, defi explicitly defined a structure of data, of data that will be passed uh, through your components. In each pipeline module, uh, you defined dev structs and explicitly defined which attributes uh, will be in your data structure. And uh, of course, you explicitly defined uh, uh, the way the data will come. You explicitly defined that, uh, first of all, it, it will be pipe, pipe uh, at one, then pipe multiplied by two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you look, when someone uh, uh, looks at your model, he can see everything. He can see which uh, which data structure uh, will be proce processed and uh, it can see in which way this data structure will be processed. Uh, easy to maintain, uh, to maintain and use. Uh, you explicitly defined a set of working processes. So you decide how many working processes will be in your program. And of course, maintainability uh, of independent compo uh, components are very, uh, are much simpler. And uh, the last but not least advantage is uh, so-called controlled parallelism or uh, I should say, uh, I would say uh, implicit parallelism when you can control number of uh, clients that supply data to your pipeline and you control the number of processes that will be process your data. That's it about, about Flowex. Okay, sorry. 
Uh, and uh, let's start discussing how to run external program from Elixir and Erlang. Uh, first of all, why we uh, why do we need why do, why do we need to run external programs? First of all, because uh, Elixir and Erlang ecosystem is not so big like in Java or Ruby or Python. Yeah, so we we need to use sometimes libraries from another language as to communicate from new awesome database or uh, some external APIs, etc. Uh, Elixir and Erlang, uh, Elixir Erlang, is not the face faceted platform. So some sometime if you need to perform some intensive calculations, some image processing, etc., etc., you 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 would better choose. Uh, C or C++ or Java or something like that because Elixir is uh, not very fast for such operation. And uh, of course there are no, there are no, no, so many Elixir and uh, Erlang developers. <coughs> okay. So Erlang uh, has a feature, has, a, uh, has an abstraction to uh, work with uh, alias languages. Uh, the feature is called Erlang Ports. Erlang Ports is an abstraction that provides uh, an interface to external programs uh, using standard input and standard uh, uh, output. Erlang Ports are process-specific resource, so uh, only, only predefined process can talk with external process, and this allows, for example, uh, uh, appropriate error trapping, so your your application will not crash if something went uh, went wrong with external application. Uh, uh, the first the first tool you can use to run external programs is Erl port. Uh, it's an Erlang library, but uh, it has Elixir wrapper export. Uh, Erl port. Uh, helps to call uh, another languages uh, from your uh, Erlang application or Elixir application, uh, but for now it, it support only uh, two external languages, Ruby and Python. Uh, but it defines interface, so I hope in the future uh, there may be much uh, more libraries. And uh, the next project is Porcelain project. Uh, the author is Oleksiy Sholik uh, from Kyiv. Uh, this project, uh, Porcelain Library, helps launch, launching external processes from Elixir. So uh, when you, uh, you you can just uh, run any any program you can run f uh, from terminal, for example. Uh, okay. So. And the last part is an example of how we may use uh, uh, alias languages inside Elixir uh, with Flavox and the library I mentioned about. Okay. Uh, you can find this project uh, on GitHub and, and just to investigate what code is. So uh, what, what the project does? Uh, uh, there will be uh, pipes with Ruby, Python, and Shell. Uh, each of pipe will say hello, and the result will be hello from Ruby, hello from Python, hello from Shell. Okay, and I, I just want to demonstrate uh, how, how easy it is to implement such functionality and uh, uh, how, how how it is beautiful to, to see what's going on. Okay, so what, what are dependencies? Dependencies, of course, Flowex we need as dependency. We need uh, export uh, uh, and airport uh, to run Ruby and uh, Python code. We need Porcelain to run uh, uh, shell commands. And uh, you, we use ESPEC, ESPEC to, for testing. Okay. Uh, Ruby component, what, what we need to define in our Ruby component. It's a mo module component. Uh, 
it's a module comp uh, component, so we need to implement uh, init function and call function. Uh, in init function, we, j we just start uh, external process which will run Ruby code. And we uh, remember the pit of the process uh, inside the options. So the, uh, the init method should return options, and we just start Ruby process and merge uh, Ruby pit to that process. Uh, here we defined uh, uh, where to find our Ruby code. And here, what is the main file of Ruby code. And uh, what call function uh, does, it just uh, calls Ruby. Uh, this, these functions I appeared when we uh, use export Ruby from export library. And just pass uh, the pit of Ruby process, pass uh, passes the, uh, the uh, function will be called from Ruby file, and that's it. And, and return the new st modified structure. Okay, let's take a look uh, to Ruby code. Ruby code is very simple. Uh, there is a m uh, method push that, uh, that just adds uh, an element to, to an array. Yeah, so when we pass uh, for example, empty array to, to this function, it will just add uh, element hello from Ruby to, to that array. Okay, Ruby code. And uh, the testing of component is also very easy. We need to test only uh, two function, uh, we test that uh, when we init uh, our module, uh, we have a Ruby process speed. And when we uh, call, uh, call that module with, with empty array, we expect that uh, resulting data will have one element, element hello from Ruby. And so component is very simple. Uh, the next component is Python component. It's almost the same. It initiates Python process and will add uh, hello from Python to, to, the, to that array and return modify structure. Python code also is very simple. It just depends element to an array. And uh, almost the last component is shell component. Uh, in shell component, we use porcelain library. And what we call, we call porcelain shell. It uh, means that we will, uh, we will call shell, shell command uh, from uh, Elixir process. And what we call is just echo hello from shell. And get the out of, of this operation. And uh, just strip this output and add, add to this output into our array. And uh, the last Elixir component, what, what Elixir component does is just joins uh, all the element into array to, to prepare a final result, okay? And how our pipeline looks like. It's very simple. Again, we use FlowWorks pipeline. We defined structure, structure which has only uh, data attribute and by default is, uh, it is an empty array. And we define uh, three pipes. And just for example, we defined uh, uh, three Ruby pipe. Uh, it means that when we start pipeline, we will have three duplicated uh, Ruby process. For Python, pi pi Python pipes, for uh, two shell pipes and one Elixir pipe, yeah? When we start uh, the pipeline, you uh, can monitor your processes in, in your system and you will see that uh, it definitely starts uh, three Ruby process and definitely starts four uh, Python processes. Mm -hmm. And of course, when we, uh, it's just to demonstrate the, the final result, uh, we start the pipeline, uh, we call the pipeline uh, with uh, empty data structure, by default data is empty array, and uh, the pipeline returns, expect the result, hello from Ruby, hello from Python, and uh, hello from shell. Okay? So, conclusion of my talk. Uh, Flow-based programming paradigm is what you definitely should, should try or definitely 
should take a closer look, uh, cl closer look because it's very interesting alternative to our conventional programming. Uh, what is the main advantage of Flavex? I think is, is that it makes it easy to convert your existing code into uh, into co into flow-based programming code. Uh, and of course, uh, in with Erlang with Elixir, you are not limited uh, by only one language, and you can use any language uh, you or your college know, for example. That's it. Thank you very much. Please. Uh, so on some of your slides, you, <coughs> you said about like bottom level and top level in flow-based programming. And uh, one of the main <coughs> idea of flow-based programming are independent components. But in the implementations, in your Flavix implementation, it seems like components should know uh, about each other. At least they should know about data structure yep. that is the same for every component. Yep. Is there any plan to make them more independent? Uh, so yeah, I, I think that uh, this is the only thing uh, that components know about each other. and. I, I'm not sure uh, that we should change uh, this situation because you, as uh, as developer, you should define a contract how your processes will communicate with each other. So uh, on some level, you definitely should define the, uh, the interfaces. In Flavix approach, you define this uh, interface explicitly when defining your pipeline. Yeah, please. Is it possible to join the pipe results? Of course. Yeah, you can create uh, uh, many pipes and you can call uh, one pipe from another pipe. That's no problem. Okay. So uh, from, f from uh, this approach, uh, you as developer uh, even, even can't see uh, the difference between uh, pipeline of uh, of order of simple functions and pipeline of the processes so you just use like a pipeline of functions these components they are uh, like pure functions right uh, yep but but you 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 can for example in, in some component you can for example ask for some data from database the database but but ideally a component has no state it just just call function inside it. How how is possible to identify uh, in which pipeline some error is in occurring? Uh, you can, for example, uh, uh, rescue an exception and merge uh, process ID of the pipe. So it, it's possible. But what if, for instance, we have unexpected result? Uh, after after pro program execute, and we uh, from from you know from your first exa example, uh, if we expect the result is three, mm -hmm. and uh, after all the result is five, uh, and we uh, program uh, d doesn't uh, raise exception, but uh, the result is. Uh, so it, it means uh, that something is wrong with, uh, in business logic yes. because if if some pi pipeline fails uh, this is like uh, uh, gen, st uh, gen stage behavior if for example unexpected year occurs some unhandled years occurs inside oh God, inside some pipes that uh, years that are not rescued uh, all all next pipes will will be crashed and restarted. It's like a uh, uh, common behavior of uh, yeah, Erlang components. What if no error occurs? So we just uh, get unexpected result, like not not three but four. How to how to find out in which uh, pipeline uh, calculation was wrong? Uh, okay. Uh, 
let's simplify. Uh, if you have a pipe of uh, simple function, of ordinary function, and you expect that this pipe of function returns five, but it returns four, what does it mean? It means that some functions are wrong. You just yeah, but we, we might might have uh, ten. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course, you should write uh, test for your for your individual components and uh, for pipeline itself. Yes, to that just to test examples. How 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 it is it to debug? Uh, if if uh, if something went wrong in one component, you you uh, the Flowex will rescue this exception and uh, you will be able to. Uh, to do something in error pipe. So in error pipe, you will see what year, what, what is a year, and can do something. Mm -hmm. uh, so in 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 Flowex implementation, uh, uh, you can't do the, uh, this condition uh, on components way. So you you can't say in Flowex like if if I have uh, three in uh, this component, uh, data should pass to this component, and if I uh, have two in this component, data should pass to this component. Uh, it's not possible uh, with Flowex because Flowex paradigm is like railway. But you can uh, can do it another way. You can, for example, uh, create two components. And uh, in these components, you check if the value is three, do something. If no, just pass to another. In this component, you check if the value is two, oh yeah, and do something. So you just uh, replace, replace uh, horizontal uh, branching into a pi pipeline, and in every pipeline you check the condition. And also you may use a pipeline inside pipeline. For example, here you may, you may start another pipeline for, uh, for some data that needs special calculations. Yep. Any debugging or tracing tools to check what's going on on which step of pipeline? Uh, not yet. Yeah, uh, it uh, in such architecture it is easy to visualize data. So uh, one of my plans is to just uh, make something like UI client for pipeline, uh, when uh, each component may communicate with this UI client and, mm -hmm. for example, notify it when it has uh, 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 informational package on the inputs on its input or when it passes to the output, and we can easily control how, how our components work. Mm 